Good morning! Today we're going to go over how to read crochet diagrams. Now if you don't know what a diagram is, this is one right here. And I know when you don't know what you're looking at, it looks like a giant mess of overwhelming confusion. But don't worry, at the end of this video you'll know you'll be looking at this diagram in a whole new light. Now diagrams can be used to read crochet patterns in its entirety, like without written instructions, or sometimes it's paired with a written pattern so that it enhances the pattern even more. Sometimes you can look, depending on who you are or what you prefer, you can either look at a diagram and follow it, or you can read the instructions, and if you have both, you can look off the other one just to make sure that you're creating the pattern correctly. Now, the first thing that you need to do to get familiar with these is to go over the basic chart symbols that are used in every language. So one of the cool things about learning how to read a diagram is that if you find a pattern that you like in Japanese, let's say, you don't need to read the Japanese language in order to understand the pattern if you have the chart because all the symbols are the same in every language and I think that that is amazing. So the first thing we're going to go over are the symbols. You can find a longer list of symbols over at the Craft Yarn Council and I'll leave that link down below. Today I just wrote down a couple of the basic symbols and we'll go over them really quick. So the first one is the slip stitch, which is represented by a dot. Now, some of these stitches really look like they're symbols, and it'll make it easier for you to remember them that way. So I would say the slip stitch is represented by a dot because it's, it's hard to see. Whenever you make a slip stitch, it's pretty unnoticeable. So it is represented by a dot. Now the chain stitch is represented by an oval and whenever you are crocheting and you're making a chain stitch as you know it kind of looks like an oval so that's how you can remember that. For the single crochet it is equally common to see either a plus sign or an X. For the half double crochet you will see a long T the double crochet is represented by the T with one slash mark in the, in the center. To remember the double crochet, the slash mark is meant to show that you are yarning over once before you insert your hook. So you know when you do a double crochet, you yarn over, insert your hook, and continue to pull through and all of that. With the treble crochet, you have two diagonal lines, and that's because you yarn over your hook twice before you insert your stitch, insert your hook into the next stitch. For this single crochet two together, you see two plus signs, and they are together. So you can see that this would be, this would count as one stitch because you're doing both together. Same with the double crochet two together. As for the three double crochet cluster, this is kind of like the double crochet three together, except instead of working over three stitches, you're working into one. So this is kind of like a mini bobble. You'll work three unfinished double crochets and then you'll yarn over and pull through all of the loops that are left on your hook. And you can see that top hat or line across the top that shows that it only counts as one stitch. Now this is something we're going to go over a lot today. It is the five double crochet shell. This is where you crochet five double crochets in one stitch, creating this shell. All right, so that is it for the symbols. And like I said, you can download the whole symbol chart at the Craft Yarn Council and I recommend printing it out or at least bookmarking it on a website so that you can always look back and see it. Diagrams can be drawn out with, for patterns that are row by row or 
in the round. Now first I'm going to go over what charts look like when you're reading them row by row. So this is a simple diagram that I created myself and I'm going to show you, first we're going to go over how to read this and then I'm going to show you what it looks like to crochet it. So first, most patterns have this key. Most chart patterns have this key so that you know what each symbol means. So even if you don't memorize them, they usually have this so that you'll know. So the first thing we're going to do is when we're working in rows, we start from the bottom and we work up. So we'll start here, we'll do our chain, and then we'll work row one, row two, row three, like an, in an S formation, kind of like a snake. And you can see right here that I've marked each row, and that's how it is on diagrams usually as well. So here we know we're going to chain 11 because there are 11, I'm sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're changing 22. My last diagram that I made was 11, so I confused myself. Okay, so we'll chain 22. And because this double crochet is right here, it's telling us that we're going to double crochet into the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6th train. Sixth chain from our hook. Next, we will skip two chains because you can see that there are no stitches worked into these chains. So we'll skip two chains and create a five double crochet shell into the next chain. So you will place five double crochets into this one chain. Now, again, we skip two chains and double crochet into the next. Then we will chain one and double crochet into the next chain. Whenever you're reading these charts, you read this, this top. Um, I've come across a couple video tutorials on reading diagrams and Marley Bird in particular calls this a top hat. So she says to follow the top hats, not the bottom. So that's how we know to create this chain right here. Because I know it's not touching, but you can see after our double crochet, we have a chain stitch and then another double crochet. So skip two chains and create another five double crochet shell into the next chain. Skip two chains, double crochet, chain stitch since I forgot to draw that, and double crochet. Now after this double crochet you will chain four. One, two, three, four. And because see how actually I forgot to go over right here how we, we double crocheted into our sixth chain. These four chains right here count as a double crochet and this counts as a chain one. Now over here these three chains count as a double crochet and then the fourth chain counts as a chain one. And that's why it lines up like that. So into our next double crochet stitch, we will crochet a double crochet. So another great thing about having these charts is you can see exactly where to place your double crochet. Because if you were reading this in a written pattern, it could say chain four and double crochet into the next stitch for row two. And some, some people might get confused and double crochet here into the chain space or even into this stitch. So a chart visually shows you where your stitches should go. So after you double crochet into the previous double crochet, you will create your five double crochet shell. So you're skipping two double crochet and creating your shell into the third double crochet from the previous shell. And you can see exactly where to place it right in the middle here. Then you will skip these two 
and double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, double crochet, double crochet, shell, five double crochet, shell, double crochet, chain stitch, double crochet. And row three is the same way. So that is how we read row by row diagrams. And I have this swatch here because as you can see, this diagram is showing us what our finished work will look like when we're done. Now I've already created this, this little mini swatch. That is the same, this is the same exact chart. This, this, <laughs> This swatch is showing you what this chart says. And I know it's not, I wish it was a little, maybe I should have blocked it so you could see it better. There. So you can see our chain, our chain four and chain one stitch, our first double crochet shell, our double crochets, our second double crochet shell, and our double crochets, and so on. So this is the same thing, and I'll go ahead and, no I won't, no I won't, because I already went over it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to work it in the round. Now I have a chart online on the computer that I put together, but I didn't print it out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you in this book. Let's see. Now this is just a typical granny square, so I'm not showing you anything you know, bad. Okay, so this is a chart that has worked in the round. I just wanted to show you what it looks like. Now, as you know, whenever we're working in the round for a granny square, we start from the center and it grows bigger. So the same as any other pat, any other granny square, you will start from the center. Now this center is telling you to chain four. So you have one, two, three, four. And see that little dot? That's a slip stitch. So this is telling you to chain four and make a slip stitch to your first stitch to create that circle. Then you're going to chain five and work three double crochet into the circle. Chain two, work another three double crochet into the circle. Chain two, three double crochet into the circle. Chain two, two double crochet into the circle. And this dot is telling you to slip stitch into that third chain right there. This dot is telling you to slip stitch into the chain space that you created and then move on to round two. Now you can also see that in, in the round diagrams that each row number is right next to the chain at the beginning of each row. I just wanted to show you that so that you understood how uh, understood the difference between working row by row and in the round. Now before I end this tutorial today, I wanted to make sure that I actually go over physically how to crochet using only a chart. Okay, so instead of dealing with that giant tangled mess, as you can see, I've decided to show you with just a different color. And I'm going to use bright orange so that you can really see these stitches. So let me make my slip knot and get my hook all ready. Now this is the diagram that we're going to go off of and we're really quick we can go over it. So as you can see we have a few different symbols here. The ovals are the chains, as we know. The, these symbols are the double crochet with the slash in the middle. These are also double crochet. They're just worked in a different way, and we'll go over that. And the plus signs are single crochet. So the, that's all you need to know for this one. 
So I'll put that right here so you can still see me work along with it. Now for the bottom, remember for row by row, we're going to work from the bottom in a zigzag formation. So first we will need to chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'll go ahead and chain 16. Okay, here are my 16 chains. And the first thing our diagram tells us is that these chain, this chain three counts as a double crochet and this chain counts as a chain one. So we're going to double crochet into the sixth chain so one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll go ahead and do that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Double crochet into that sixth chain. And the next thing, remember we're reading by the top hats. So next is a chain one. So we will chain one. After the chain one is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and continue. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Oh, and I'm sorry, I should go back and say that when you're chaining one, we're also skipping a stitch. So you can see that there's no double crochet, no stitch worked into this chain. So when we chain one, we skip the next stitch and then double crochet into the next chain. Chain one, skip the next chain and double crochet into the next chain. So we're skipping a chain and double crocheting. Chain one, oops, chain one, skip this chain, double crochet into the next chain. Chain one, skip this chain, double crochet into the next chain. And we continue the same thing down the row. So we have our first row of double crochets and chain ones. At the end, well first I will say that you can look at this diagram and see that it's showing you exactly what we have right here. And so the next row, row two, we're going to chain three. Chain three. And the diagram doesn't tell us to turn, but we know to turn our work. And again, with the top hats, we're going to be working in the order of the top and not where the origin of the stitch is, if that makes sense. We're not working to where the bottom says, we're working for the top. So we're not worrying about this one yet. We're just worrying about this double crochet. So the first double crochet is telling us that we will skip the next chain one space and we're skipping the next double crochet and we're working into the next chain one space. So we skip the first chain space, skip the first, skip the double crochet and work into this chain one space. So that will be our first double crochet. Now the graph is saying to work our second double crochet into the chain stitch that we skipped. So what we're going to do is work our double crochet into this chain space. So we yarn over and go back and double crochet into this space. So we have this double crochet crisscross. 
The next thing on our chart is saying double crochet into the next chain space. So we're not double crocheting into this chain space that we just crocheted into. We're skipping this one, skipping the next double crochet, and working into the next chain space. So we're skipping this chain space, skipping this double crochet, and working into this next chain space. The next stitch is saying we go back and work into the same chain space that we worked into before. So we're going back to work into this chain space. And then we have our second crisscross. Our next stitch is saying the same thing. We skip the current chain space, we skip this chain space, skip the next double crochet, and double crochet into the next chain space. Then we'll go back and double crochet into the chain space that we skipped. So skip, skip, work. Now go back and work into this one. The next one is the same thing. Work into the next chain space, then go back and work into the previous chain space. Work into, see how our diagram is telling us to work into this chain? So, okay. There we go. So we'll work right here into this space. So double crochet here, and then double crochet into the space we skipped. Okay, so we're done with our crisscross double crochets. And our next stitch is saying to double crochet into the third chain. So we will, we're working into this chain just a double crochet into that top chain from the previous round. So now we're done with our row two. This is row one, row one, row two. Now row three, we're gonna chain one and single crochet into the same double crochet. So chain one, turn, and single crochet into this double crochet stitch. Just like that. And then we're going to single crochet in each double crochet across. So I'll go ahead and do that. This part's easy. And then it also says to single crochet into the third chain from the previous row or the top chain from the previous row. And this is our chain right here, so we're gonna single crochet into the top chain. Oops. There, so that's our single crochet row. Our next row is row four and it is telling us to chain four. One, two, three, four, turn your work. And what's the, what that's also telling us is that this chain three counts as a double crochet and this chain one counts as a chain one space. So that's why it's above the single crochet. So because this chain three counts as a double crochet, we're going to skip this single crochet and double crochet into the next stitch. So skip, skip the base of the chain, skip the next chain or single crochet and then double crochet into the next. There we go. Now it's telling us to chain one, skip the next stitch, and double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, 
skip next stitch and double crochet into the next stitch. And as you can see, it repeats the same way. Now at the end of the row, it's telling you to skip that chain one, or sorry, that single crochet that you made and to work into the chain one. The, the chain one from the previous round. So whenever you chain one and turned, that's the chain that you are working into. So chain one and then work into the chain one stitch. That way you still have that gap instead of working into the single crochet. Now row five, we are chaining three and turning our work. And the next stitch, because we're looking at the top hat, is telling us to skip the chain one space and the double crochet and work into the next chain one space. So we're going to skip this chain one space, skip this double crochet, and work into the next space. And then we will work back into the space that we skipped. Because that's what this stitch says to do. And now we'll do the same thing. We'll skip the next double crochet and work into the next chain space. So skip work into the next space and then we're going to go back and double crochet into the space we skipped. So now I hope you understand what I mean when I say to follow the top hats. It just means it's if you hold your pattern like this you see that you're just working in order. I don't want these crisscrosses to confuse you. Row six says to chain one and single crochet into each stitch down the row. And don't forget the chain, the top of the chain three from the previous round. Now our last row we'll do again. It is telling us to chain four. One, two, three, four. Turn. And we're going to skip the next single crochet and double crochet into the next because that chain one counts as a stitch. Chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and remember you're skipping a single crochet after each double crochet. Chain one, skip single, double crochet into the next. And we are working into the chain ones that we made at the beginning of the last row. All right. So we have just crocheted using a graph. So that is how you read a crochet diagram and turn it into a swatch. So we have our diagram and our swatch that matches. Now remember, every time you read a crochet diagram, always go by the top hats and don't forget to skip your stitches if there are any stitches that you need to skip. If there are no stitches above a stitch, then that means you're skipping it. Thank you for tuning in to today's tutorial. And tomorrow I will have an accompanying blog post that covers all of the information that we covered today 
and probably a little bit more. So definitely go check it out tomorrow. I will post it in the group when it's available. And I will see you next time. Bye.